Welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Sean Garrison, your host and editor of DadsDivorce.com. Today we are joined by family law attorney William Fellon. William is an attorney in Cordell & Cordell's Philadelphia office and will be joining us to talk about the recent Ashley Madison data breach. Ashley Madison is a website with 37 million users that helps married people cheat. The website was recently hacked and there has been much speculation as to the impact that the breach could have on the number of married couples seeking divorce. William, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Sean. Uh, William, to start with, uh, there's been some debate as to what impact uh, the security breach could have uh, just on the number of couples who are seeking, potentially seeking divorces. Uh, one side argues that it won't have much of an impact at all since uh, mo most people these days aren't really seeking fault-based divorces. Um, what is your take on the topic? Uh, do you see there being a surge in the number of people seeking divorces or do you see that the impact is minimal? Well, well, I, well I think that it'll take uh, some time to actually see the ultimate impact of this recent data breach and its effect on the rate of divorces. Uh, I think overall you could see a, a potential increase in divorces and there's uh, two reasons for this. First is the actual seeking of a fault-based divorce on adultery as you mentioned a few seconds ago. And so after the data breach and these individuals are revealed, you may have some injured spouses, some aggrieved spouses looking at this and thinking, I now have grounds for a divorce for adultery, and that could get them to seek counsel and file for divorce on that ground. So that's more of a legal reason, but there's also more of an impetus reason, uh, the driving force, a more practical reason, and that is that you're going to have these uh, aggrieved spouses figuring out that, that, that their loved one was on a site like Ashley Madison and fooling around, and they are just going to be upset about it. They are going to want a change in their life circumstances because they're going to feel wrong. And so they could go seek a divorce on any grounds because you do have fault ground divorces. Uh, a recent ABA, American Bar Association survey, showed that 34 of the 50 states in the District of Columbia still have fault grounds and some people still do choose fault grounds. Uh, the only downside is that they could be time consuming and more expensive. So instead, practically speaking again, these spouses who found out that their other loved one was on Ashley Madison can go for no fault grounds where they just have to wait a certain period of time to advance the divorce and uh, from a date of separation usually and then get the divorce granted. So I think overall, considering those two factors, you may at the end of the day uh, see an increase. And what about from, uh, from the divorce attorney's perspective? You know, if you're representing a client um, and the opposing party has been discovered that they, they had activity on the site. Um, is that something that you're, you're able to use as evidence in order to uh, get your clients a better, uh, better settlement? Well, I, I think first it depends on where you practice and, and how the courts treat uh, action and, and behavior like that in, in the course of a divorce. Um, because usually any competent attorney would know that and then use that factor in settlement negotiations. But I think in and of itself, showing if, if somebody was on Ashley Madison, that doesn't per se show adultery. Uh, especially, uh, for example, where I practice in Pennsylvania, for adultery you have to prove sexual intercourse. So regardless of a site like Ashley Madison, that is a tall order to fill usually uh, to prove in a court of law. So. Uh, it, you know, it, to go that far and show that being on Ashley Madison led to sexual intercourse may not have uh, much sway in negotiations at the end of the day. And I know this varies by state, but can you elaborate on some of the ways that uh, marital misconduct can, can come into play during the divorce process? Um, even in no-fault divorces, are, are, are there ways that a person's infidelity can potentially uh, factor into the final divorce settlement? Yeah, that's a great question, Sean. Um, where I practice in Pennsylvania, it definitely can, and it's something that should be kept uh, in everybody's mind going forward. Uh, so even if you're going forward on a divorce and you're not seeking grounds for the adultery or the marital misconduct, uh, it can come into play in a few ways. First is in the support case, specifically the support between the two spouses. 
So in Pennsylvania, there's something called spousal support, which is uh, between the two spouses. And it's when usually when the parties separate and it's also before a divorce complaint is actually filed. So the spouse who files for it, if they are the ones seeking spousal support and they committed uh, adultery or had marital misconduct, the, the spouse who may be obligated to pay that spousal support has what's called an entitlement defense. So the entitlement defense says, hey, I don't, I don't have an obligation to pay you any spousal support because it was your fault that the marriage has broken apart and why we've separated. And that's usually how that argument goes. So that's the first one. Second is that marital misconduct is explicitly listed as one of 17 factors in the Pennsylvania Divorce Code for how alimony is to be awarded by the court. So it, that's always something, it's just one of 17 factors, but it's definitely something to be mindful of. A third reason is that you want to be aware of is if the marital misconduct or the uh, adultery uh, affected the marital estate. And usually a, a very common example of that is where you have the spouse who's committing the affair, has a, a paramour, if you will, and is using marital assets and marital funds for that relationship. And that can be held against them when the court goes to decide how the marital state is to be divided. Because if you're using uh, a joint checking account um, and, and using what's a, a marital account to pay for a relationship, that's dissipation of marital assets. And then finally, another reason, uh, sometimes to a lesser extent, depending on the circumstances, is how this could play out in a custody case. If you're going through a divorce and you have children and you need to decide on custody, if you have a, a paramour uh, or a mistress or a, some a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you have to be aware that if that person is around the children, that that impacts the best interests of the children and the children's safety especially if that uh, person that you're having that relationship, that side relationship with, uh, has some type of a history or something that should be known that could be potentially dangerous to the children. Sure, um, and with the rise of the internet and uh, just these various social media websites, uh, we're seeing more and more that a person's online activities uh, are, are factoring in to, to their divorce cases. Um, based on your experience, what are just some of the, the different ways that uh, an individual's social media usage um, can factor in just to, into the overall divorce process? I think when it comes to social media and the overall divorce process, especially when you're looking at it in the light of something like marital misconduct, uh, cheating and adultery, uh, there's two ways that it, it can impact the divorce case. The first is the, the legal Legal, you know, how it can impact the, the legal aspect of your case. So for all the reasons that we just discussed earlier with how it impacts, can potentially impact spousal support, alimony, distribution of the marital estate, even custody, uh, you, you know, if there's something out there on social media that could be brought into evidence and can hurt your case, then that's going to affect the bottom line as to what the judge awards one party over the, the party who's uh, performing the misconduct. But I think uh, something that's often overlooked by the parties and sometimes even the, the family law practitioner is the practical aspect of all of this social media evidence, especially when it comes to evidence that deals with cheating. Uh, regardless of whether that, that uh, you know, social media uh, evidence gets into a court or gets you know, up to a judge for consideration, even before that it can impact your case, practically speaking. So if, you're, if the aggrieved spouse sees that, and let's say you're in the middle of a divorce and you're in the middle of negotiations, that spouse could be so burned and so scorned by it that they can just walk up from the settlement table and then you are litigating your divorce. And that could lead to unnecessary time and fees. The other uh, part of that though is that it can even enrage uh, the aggrieved spouse so much where they could start filing litigation in the case just because they are hurt by it. And that's just human nature and that's something to be aware of. So even if a, a, a litigation, something that's filed uh, is meritless, it's still done and you're still having to pay the expense for it. So that practical aspect is also very 
Well, thank you so much for your time today, William. We really enjoyed having you here on Dad's Divorce Live. Thank you for having me. That was William Fellon, a family law attorney in Cordell & Cordell's Philadelphia office. To read more about the Ashley Madison hacking scandal, visit dadsdivorce.com. That'll do it for another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Sean Garrison, editor of dadsdivorce.com, and we'll see you next time.